Hello, this is Dr. Mike, and I wanted to just do another intro for week two to kind of rehash the things we've talked about in week one, kind of give you a preview of what's coming this week. I think this is a very interesting course, and I hope that you've put enough time into it to where you can uh, understand how important it is to our well-being as human beings to understand how things kind of relate to each other. We live in a very uh, changing world, and we live in a world that it sometimes it tests us to the very depths of our being. And so it's very under, it's very interesting to understand the anthropological aspects of the human existence and why we're here and how we how we operate. Uh, we started out last week talking from chapter two about the different uh, characteristics of culture. And I think this is really interesting that we we understand that cultures learn. You you are born into the world naked and you know unable to communicate and able to eat. One fellow says you leave the same way when you're old, naked and toothless and not able to hear and eat and respond to the world. So maybe we come into the world, go out the same way. But when you come into the world, you really don't come in with a culture other than maybe a few genetic things that you've picked up through uh, parents that are not really learned. But learn, you do learn very quickly. Every one of us has a culture, whether we uh, you know, we look at Hispanic culture, Asian culture. We realize there are a lot of many, many aspects to that. It can be food, it can be dress, it can be religion, it can be a, a host of things. But those of us that aren't directly tied to one of those identifiable cultures that we can look at also have a culture. I mean, as a Southern uh, person, I have certain foods that I eat. I speak in a certain way, even though I've tried to get rid of this southern uh, accent for 65 years uh, i'm losing that battle because it is culture it's inbred in me it's ingrained in me something that i've learned it's it's something that we share with our families that's why we are very uh, uh culturally we are tied to, to enjoying family and friends and things like that because we hang around with people like us they used to practice what they called chain migration where people were coming to this country and they wanted to live around people from their country that, that used that, that followed their religion, that ate their foods and that dressed like they did. And that's why you have in large cities like New York, little Italy or little Chinatown or Japan, little Japan, all those things, because we not only learn the culture, but we share the culture and we enjoy that. And so it, it's integrated into the very being, into our society. Uh, there's a vast difference between like East and West. Uh, Westerners think a different way than say Easterners. So if we compare ourselves to people that live in China to America, you see that really, you see that really clearly. And these cultures are very dynamic. People just absolutely enjoy uh, what they enjoy. Uh, you will have a, you're, I hope you're enjoying the uh, content that I posted for you. One of the things that we are looking at is uh, that you're listening to are the TED Talks, which are very short, 10, 15 minutes, but this from a different voice talking about different aspects of culture. In chapter three, where we talk about ethnographic research, it's history, methods, theories, uh, you're going to hear from a lady who talks about this gigantic study that's being done in Great Britain with children and what they learned about what it means to be good parents or bad parents. You realize that as parents, you are teaching your children, you're incorporating parts of your culture into them, your love for family, your love for working, your interest in doing well, all those things, everything you do has a cultural element to that. And so it's well worth you, you looking at the uh, video and spending a few minutes to kind of think about that. It might even help your parenting skills or whatever. So uh, we do in these studies, study different cultures, at a distance, we study, you know, societies and how they operate, and we study a lot of peasant communities, or we go in and study Native American tribes. All these things help us to learn, uh, and as we do this ethnographic study, uh, we raise research questions, and we try to answer those to better understand the, uh, the human experience, as we would call it, uh, because it's different for everybody. We look at people, you work around people that have different cultures, and that's vitally important. In chapter six of last week, we talked about social identity, about personality, about gender. All those things greatly influence the world that we live in. Uh, we, we live in a day when people are very much 
uh, into learning about themselves or they have a social identity, they're self-aware. Uh, we, we, through technology, we have a lot of time that we spend on social media trying to, to have a presence. And the funny thing about social media is that it can be just as brutal to our personality as having real live human friends that we meet with and talk to who can be brutal. I don't know, I'm, I'm assuming most of you went through junior high school and high school and, and realized how clickish your friends could be or people in different groups could be. You probably still have some pain from that, from being rejected, uh, not, not allowed into a social group that you thought everybody that was anybody was in. Uh, I can, I'm 65, I can go back to junior high and high school and recount stories today that would be considered bullying and people would be arrested and put in jail for that. Uh, but we endured that. And, you know, your parents' response to that was, you know, just suck it up. You got to learn to be a man sometime uh, and just take things and go on. And we learned that. that that's not the, the, the personality today because we know how those things affect us and still affect us. So the per human personality is really interesting. Uh, we, we have a lot of different alternative gender models today. We talk about being intersex or intersexuality or being transgender or being gay. Those things have uh, become a part of our vocabulary and come to the, to the forefront. And they're extremely important to uh, having a well, you know, a well uh, uh, functioning life, things that you can feel at peace with yourself. This week, we're going to take on three new chapters. One is called the patterns of subsistence, how these things develop into patterns. Uh, we adapt to things that we never thought we could. One of the things that comes with old age is that you don't adapt as easily as you get older to change as you did when you were younger. I have an aunt and uncle that are in their 90s. They can't use a debit card. They don't know how to use their cell phone completely. So they struggle with that. They, they outlived their time, if you will. My grandparents who died in the 80s would never been able to, to pay a bill online because they had to go pay the person they owed and they had to know who it was and they had to meet with them. It wasn't this thing of, well, you know, your house loans in Chicago somewhere. So the, our early ancestors, and you're going to talk about this, they had to go out and forage and look for food and and uh, make, a, make their way in the world, find enough food to eat and stay alive during the hunters and gatherers stage. And then they moved into living in larger groups, building cities. And so they had to uh, adapt to that. Food uh, was one of the major issues that they had to deal with, uh, was finding enough food to eat, which was a struggle on a day-to-day -day basis. We're also gonna talk about economic systems and that kind of anthropology and talk about case studies where we understand how important land and water resources are and technology is and labor resources and the patterns that come about and how we distribute and exchange goods. That's a, that's a very complicated study that we could spend probably uh, our lifetime engaged in and not, uh, not realize how important that it is to our our well-being. And then finally, you're going to move to chapter 12, and we're, we're not able to take every chapter. I hope that if you're able to, at some point, you can uh, uh, come back to the things that are, that are important to you. But we're going to talk about politics, power, war and peace, and how those things affect our abilities. If we have time, we'll talk a little bit about spirituality and religion and how important that is to our well-being. We've never found a culture that didn't have some kind of religious uh, things that they that they worshiped or followed. So I hope this little preview will help you. Let me encourage you to take the time, put in the time to look at the resources, listen to the TED Talk, listen to the lecture, and I think you will find it to be most helpful uh, to you as you do that, and uh, you'll come to, to get, gain a lot more from this course. As I said at the beginning, it's a very important course, and I think that you'll find it to be most helpful to your, uh, you know, to your moving forward with your, with your life and, and realizing how, you know, we do things as human beings. One of the, the TED Talks talks about the difference between us and a chimpanzee and how they're not able to take information and use it for good. Uh, so I think that will be, you know, something you'll find interesting. Let me know if you have any questions. I will be 
responding to you in the discussion boards. Be sure to read other people's responses. And I think that you'll find that to be very helpful as well. Until next time, thank you for listening. Bye.